States. We welcome all of you back to Louisville, Kentucky. Next up, a Midwest region third round encounter between the eight seeded Cincinnati Bearcats and the top seeded Kentucky Wildcats. Winner of this game goes to Cleveland. Tomorrow, West Virginia, Maryland will decide one of the other spots in Cleveland. Hi, once again, everybody. Vern Lundquist along with Jim Spinarkle. Kentucky chasing history, of course. Five to go to complete an undefeated season. They didn't look all that sharp early in their win against Hampton. No, they had about 15 minutes where they did not play well, but one of the things about their team and reading some of the comments they've made, they're not happy with the way they played and they want to make sure they leave this building having a good taste in their mouth. And obviously they are really pumped up and ready to go. They have the depth, they have the size. John Calipari's team, I think will be ready, but I know that it's going to be a Cincinnati team that's going to come at them from the standpoint of aggressive play. Cincinnati survived their last game against Purdue. Look at this shot burn. It just sits on the glass. Then they start their celebration and everything working from that perspective. And with all due respect to my good friend and your good friend, Bill Raftree, they ended it with the smooch. <laughs> You didn't quite get the emphasis. Ooh. Oh, there you go. <laughs> now we hear it. You saw Larry Davis, the associated head coach. They are very balanced this season. And Larry Davis, the associate head coach, had taken over for Mick Cronin when Mick suffered a brain injury back in December. The lineups on the left for Odd Cobb, Troy Colvain, hero of that win, Gary Clark, Shaq Thomas, Octavius Ellis, and for Kentucky, the first wave, Harrison, Andrew Harrison, Trey Lyles, Willie Cauley-Stein, and Carl Anthony Towns, and the head coach in his sixth season, John Calipari. Kentucky has the ball in the hands of Andrew Harrison, one of the twins. Cincinnati comes out with an extended zone defense initial look. Copain number 10 is guarding Harrison into the corner. Trey Lyles for three. Rebound Cincinnati. You know, Vern, one of the interesting things, I know these guys shake hands before the game when they get introduced sometimes. Both teams just came walking out with a little bit of a swagger. There wasn't even like a, a touch on the hands, like a good luck or anything. So I think this game obviously means a lot in the NCAA tournament, but something tells me there's an underlying current here between these two. Well, the last time they met was in 2005. Kentucky won that. Kentucky has won the last dozen or so. There's the first basket. Shaq Thomas, the junior out of Patterson, New Jersey, despite their adjacency almost, it's only an hour and a half away between Cincinnati and, and uh, Louisville, they don't play regular season. That one no good. Go get it. Bearcats for Rod Cobb. Yeah, they have to be concerned. Whenever they start going into the paint, one of the things that Larry Davis told us yesterday was, Vern, remember, don't get caught trying to go over two bigs in there. Like that. <laughs> There's the first block. That's Willie Cauley-Stein. Copain back to Cobb. They're so tall. Kentucky. Oh, they sure are. They come out with Paulie Stein. They played a perimeter with him. Five on the shot clock. Shaq Thomas, three on the shot clock. Oh, boy, it's coming our way. <laughs> One of the things, Larry Davis, as I mentioned, don't get caught in there, and now he loses the ball, so that's kind of a half a shot right there. But defensively, they close. Look at how long they are outside with Lyles coming out. And watch for them. Yeah, this is what they're going to start to do, just pop it into the paint. Got the roll. Against an undersized Hampton team the other night, Vern. Remember, they were tossing it in early, the first 10 minutes, just trying to go right over that. So Cincinnati has to find a way to start pushing bodies out, play aggressive basketball. And I doubt they're going to... They're not going to shy away, that's for sure. There's Gary Clark. Larry Davis hoping that he has a big role in this game. Jumper, Copay, in and out. But there with the follow is Octavius Ellis. Octavius Ellis ejected from the game on Thursday because of a flagrant two foul. Allowed to play in this game, 
because there was no fight involved in the flagrant two. It was an elbow that he threw at A.J. Hammonds. There we go, looking at Towns on the blocks. Good stay, good double team. Oh. Well, take another look at this Octavius Ellis flagrant two foul. Yeah, and you know, he goes right at him and lets, lets Hammonds have it right kind of under the chin there and very disappointed after it. He was going into a block out, but you can't condone what he did in that that game. And here's the hard play. And this is what Kentucky is going to expect. And this is what they're going to get. They may win this game, but if they win it, they're going to have to play aggressive team basketball against this Cincinnati ball club. And Ellis is going to sit. On for him is Corey DeBerry, who averages only 10 minutes per game, but because of the ejection, he had to play extensive minutes the other night. Four four. You know, DeBerry might have been one of the key factors, even though Copain hit that shot that sent it into OT. DeBerry played very well. Let's see if he can continue with his minutes. He's a real strong, solid player on the blocks. For Rod Cobb. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Oh boy. Those are the types they want to avoid. Here they come. Trey Lyles. Upstairs. Aaron Harrison. Up and under. Oh! Uh, oh, look at. Did uh, you see that? Yeah, I looked. That was a foul, not called. Harrison threw Clark. Put his arms around him and threw him to the side. At the other end, knocked out of bounds, Kentucky ball. Burn, if you come into the lane as a Cincinnati player, you have to make better judgments. Even this redirect, pulling the ball away from them, they're just too long because they have Coley Stein roaming around out front. Now watch Harris. Well, we're back to the live play. On the floor, <laughs> Shaq Thomas picks it up. I think you're going to use that phrase a few times today, on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> there are going to be bodies on the floor. Here's Copain to Shaq Thomas. Jumper over Lyles. Nope. Nice effort by Clark, but he fouls the Harrison. This is uh, Andrew Harrison. And that's a good effort by Clark, but he has to back off on that one, too. Can understand why he's going for it. So here we go. Let the scrambling begin. And just a little extra. Head coach Mick Cronin out for the season since December 20th. He does watch every game. Here's Allie. I'm here with Mick Cronin inside Rick Pitino's private office. Now, you told me you were a superstitious guy. You usually only change up your locations for watching games after a losing streak, but you won on Thursday. You're changing it up today. Well, we had to check out of the hotel. So <laughs> I, it was either drive back home and get there in time, but I wanted to be here with the, with the kids, uh, no matter what the result after the game. Um, unfortunately, I know the coach at Louisville. He's got a pretty nice office. <laughs> what was your involvement with the team today? Uh, just same as normal, you know, be there for Larry, help the guys prepare. Uh, I, I could work ahead because they were focused on Purdue. So once they got that done, I've been watching a lot of Kentucky. Uh, I'm a high paid advanced scout. Is this soundproof in, ca in case you get a little angry or want to yell out some cheers at the end of the game? Uh, uh, yeah, I'm just, if I get, I get antsy, I'm going to snoop around in here, see what Coach Patino's got in here. He's, I'm sure he's got some good wine in the back. There's no doubt about that. But the more I talk to him, the more it's going to cost me. I'll buy into a horse eventually, I'm sure, because of all this conversation. Always has a sense of humor. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Al. Uh, Mick Cronin, we got to spend a little time with him the other day. He was an assistant to Rick Patino here at Louisville for two years. I asked him what he learned from Rick Patino. He said, I learned to go from light beer to red wine. Beautiful. Yeah. That works. And he and Larry Davis have been great friends for a long time. And uh, Larry Davis has been with Mick. Here's the free throw by Marcus Lee. Larry Davis left a head coaching job at Furman to join Mick Cronin here. And Cronin will advise you quickly and emphatically that he believes Larry Davis deserves another head coaching job. And just to add to that too, Vern, with Mick, and it's great. We spoke to him 
but it's it's great to hear the reports from a medical perspective that he's doing well and all the tests are coming back great so more importantly than a basketball game we're glad to see that he's doing well and his team is tied with Kentucky at four wow look at Copain get into Barry's face get the ball back out exactly and, and this kind of why do you don't hand out whistles when fans walk into the building because they're all nasty right now they don't like the calls this is getting more and more physical and this is the way you have to beat Kentucky I think you put together a good effort and now the fans get their way because it's going to go the other way five second call on Cincinnati well we've got a fresh four on the floor Harrison is out there now so Eulis there's uh, Eric Devin Booker is out. Oof. We just talked about physical play. These officials may have heard us because Johnson there gets called for a little bit of a moving screen. Not much at all. You have to consider you put yourself down and plant. And Coach Cal looking good over there in that suit, but didn't like that call. He can afford it. <laughs> he can afford it. That's not the only one he's got in his closet. How do you like the way it's been called so far, the officiating? I think the officials came in just like everybody who's following these two teams. They know it's going to be a physical game. Oh, man. That would be Dakari Johnson that time. So I think the officials are doing just fine at this point. Booker, it's not falling early now for Kentucky. Oh, great step in. Yes. Kelvin Johnson, who was a starter, Kentucky starts one of seven. They've established a defensive presence, but not offensively so far. Yeah, if they get a, a, a look at the basket from the outside or 15 feet, they have to, right there, they have to make a decision and go. Look at this. Tipped by DeBerry, but he tipped it out of bounds. Whoa! Watch Whoa! It. Who was that? I didn't catch who that is. It's what a Harrison. That? It's Aaron Harrison, number two. He's up, he's all right. But he flattened a few photographers. <laughs> It's physical on the court, Vern, and guess what? Off the court also. He's okay. Yeah, everybody <laughs> in photographer's role, oh. thankfully, is okay. Right. Yeah. Oh, it's lucky he didn't hit that camera case. Yeah, exactly. So you see in a 2-2-1 two, two, Cincinnati slow down press. It just takes a little time off it. Now they slip back. Let's see what they slip back. Okay, they're switching this time. They're back into their matchup man for ma matchup zone. Here's Euless Booker, Willie Cauley Stein, and Carl Anthony Towns are back on the floor. Came on during the dead ball. One for eight. And so, so far, so good in their defense. It's packing it in. Next time down, I'll talk a little bit more about that matchup, too, because it's important how they play it. Nice. That sure was. The challenge by Ellis with a good stride and some aggressive play going to the basket. All set up by the guards. Now what I mean by the matchup, Vern, when the guy's in your area right here, you play a man-to-man. -man. If he vacates, you go the other way. Wow. So much for that. I was, I wasn't going to say it, <laughs> but I was thinking, Oh, oh, what a screen. <laughs> Clark set a screen on Eulitz for three. Yep. <sighs> Sanders, that's the one guys have to hit on the perimeter if they get the look. Jermaine Sanders, one of the seniors. Here's Eulitz back to Harrison. Little bump. And then, yeah. Uh, Yeah, so Cincinnati trying to set it up in this matchup, and they go right over the top. And Vern, I, you can pick your poison. Any any kind of defense isn't going to really stop that play. But they come back and they answer. What do they get? They get a good look. Guy was only at about 27% on the year. Sanders knocks one back, but every outside shot is so important. Yes, it is. If, We've seen yeah. what happens when you try and go inside. Yeah, if, if Cincinnati can put together, a, you know, a 45, 50% out, you know, from 15 feet and beyond shooting day, they have a chance. Oh. Nobody home. Whoa! 
very positive start for Cincinnati. 11.57 to go, first half. Bearcats with the lead. We're back in Louisville. Watch live games on your Amazon Fire HD, Windows, or other connected devices with NCAA March Madness Live. Watch now at NCAA.com slash March Madness or download the app today. So, Vern, we're going to take a look at the Cincinnati defense against Purdue. So, Cincinnati is in white from Thursday night, not to confuse. So, watch the way they try to pack the middle of the floor with the white shirts. Now, they'll go out to the perimeter, but they're not going to charge the perimeter. Did you notice the way they just put the hand up? Clark puts a hand up, and then they contest the shot, but they're not going to run out. So, they don't want people driving by them, and they don't, sure, just don't want them to establish Kentucky's offensive block game like we saw UCLA do in the first game here. Here's Copain, guarded by Eulis, number three. To Barry, got it to fall. That's how you use your body. You neutralize that block shot blocking. And at the other end, rejected, but then put back by Carl Anthony Towns. It's one of the things when we watched them practice the other day, the ability of Towns to run the floor for a big guy is exceptional in knowing when to release and go. Copain. Booker out on Johnson. And he pushes him even farther out. Gives him some space to operate, though. Entry pass. Take away. No foul there if you the bury. Good job. Just get back. Cincinnati with four early turnovers now. Foul is going to be called on Sanders, I believe. Or from behind. Yeah, it's Sanders. Well, we talked, and, and it's very interesting that Cincinnati and Kentucky do not play all that often. There's the University of Cincinnati, 86 miles to Kentucky. Only 77 to Louisville. Now, Louisville and Kentucky play every year. One of the most anticipated games in this state. Speaking of which, I'm, I'm thinking now about one of the matchups tomorrow, Kansas Wichita State. State. Another one. Very good point. Kansas will not schedule Wichita right. State. Now they're going to play them. So, you, so you're telling me they didn't schedule this game? <laughs> <laughs> the bracket scheduled it yeah, for them, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Towns. And, and Kansas has been a little up and down. Yes, they know? have. So they haven't been the Kansas from the last three, five, seven years. Not to say Bill Self doesn't have a solid tough basketball team, but not running on all cylinders. Well, yeah. the crowd is uh, up now. Kentucky with Towns leading the way has climbed back to within one. Just be patient if you're Cincinnati. Notice how they're just going to try to run the clock, but if you get a good look, you must take it. Look at that baseline defense. Booker, seven on the shot clock, takes the three. Oh, great position. Barry, whoa! Oh, he's just pushing people around in a legal fashion to get great offensive positioning. Here's Eulis. How deep is this team? Eulis, Tyler is a five foot nine inch freshman. He has the fourth most minutes per game on this team, almost 25. There's Trey Lyles. Entry pass to Colley Stein. Bad shot. Oof. Towns. To work the glass. Look at the right side. He just uses the arm to clear. And, and the beauty of that was there was a couple of things there, Vern. The, the fact that he gets inside the Kentucky player Towns, but how about where he caught that rebound, kind of leaning his two hands behind him? Towns probably could have gotten that one because the Berry was leaning forward. Harrison twins are back on the floor. This is Aaron Harrison for three. Oh. But look at Colley Stein go over the back of Johnson for the rebound. Three for 16 for Kentucky so far, Vern. How about that? Don't foul in those spots right there. Let's see if they're ready to make Wide some open three. Here we go. Shooters shoot, don't they? We're tied. 
So does Cincinnati early on let Kentucky's defense rattle them? And the other combination is do they let these fans get in their heads at all? Corey DeBerry. Uh, chance for the lead now for Kentucky. Into the corner, Trey Lyles. And if they score here, Vern, the next possession for Cincinnati will be very important. From the corner, Jim, the last three. Yeah, so here's the, they go inside, and now look at this defensively. You have a guy turning his back defensively. What does that mean if you kick it back out? He's never going to be able to recover that quickly. So once again, good patience by Kentucky with Aaron Harrison hitting the long ball. Foul was called on Jermaine Sanders. 13-13. Lyles goes left. Very talented player at 6'10". The ability to put it on the floor. And they found the seam against the matchup man-to-man. -man. It's, the, it's the free throw line. And if you're able to put it on the floor and have a decision maker there, here's that possession I was talking about. First lead for the Wildcats. Now you don't want him taking that shot. You do want him taking that shot. Very nice answer, wasn't it? Yes. That was a big one. Don't let Kentucky and the crowd take over. Kevin Johnson puts Cincinnati back on top. Lyles. I'm thinking he's going to lay that ball in. Yeah. And he's got a little extra extension on the left arm. Steal. Euless, two on two. Foul. Well, the ability of Lyles to stretch, to extend on the first one. If you like that extension, watch this one for the finish going away. Kentucky doing well. Game summary, Kentucky with a slow start offensively. They've hit their last three in a row. Look at the bench points. I don't think that's going to last. I don't think so either. And, you know, that's one of the things, you know, you don't have that much depth in Cincinnati compared to Kentucky. But when you think about it, the fouls are mounting up for Cincinnati. But that's how they're going to play it. They're going to play it rugged, aggressive, and see how, where the chips may fall doing it their way. Well, Cincinnati's got to be pleased at their position here with only 7.34 to go. That's uh, that number, to huh? emphasize what we <laughs> just alluded to. Two-point Kentucky lead. Three-point lead. 7.34 to go. We'll switch up here defensively. Can they get it in time? Just barely. Yeah. This is for Rod Cobb, a junior. First year at Cincinnati. And they're taking their time, but it's also because Kentucky's making them take their time. With four on the shot clock. Rebound to Barry. Wow. Yes! <laughs> I know how to go over those trees. That's it. Throw it off the ceiling. <laughs> bounce, bounce it off the ceiling and get it to go in. Great offensive rebound, though, by DeBerry again. Yes, and all it was. Because he's just he's pounding the thinner guys. You know, some of the, they're tall, but not as strong as him. Look oh. at him go to the floor. He did knock it out of bounds. He checks in at a hefty 6'9", 275. And watch him here at the hands. He stops the ball, Vern. He couldn't catch it off the rebound. So what does he do? He gets it and stops it with his fingertips. And then he goes up, up and away with it. <laughs> and now watch him. He almost pulled that off, too, with a tip before he hit the out-of-bounds line. Sure did. 
Well, we've got uh, the Harrison twins, Euless, Trey Lyles, and Carl Anthony Towns on the floor right now for Kentucky. One point game. Harrison jumped shot. DeBerry with another rebound. Yeah, and this pace that Cincinnati's playing at both ends of the floor with their zone. A little push down low. They're going to get Towns. But the pace, both sides, Vern, they're, they're slowing it down. They're limiting the possessions. And the first goal that Cincinnati has in this game is to make sure at halftime it's still a game, right? So you don't want to say they don't want to see John Calipari and company go up 10, 12, 15 points, and you're fighting out of the hole. They'll take the time off the clock. Where is everybody? Whoa. Hello. Copain with that drive around the corner, and every single person, the bigs in particular, weren't at home. This is a Kentucky team that leads the country in defensive. Oh, a block and a foul call. They're yielding 35.5%, the Wildcats. And they fell asleep on that last inbound. They sure did. And let's see where they all go. So here's one here going this way, one out here. And who's home? No one. Terrific recognition. If you can get an easy layup against this team, take it all afternoon. But there are not many that they're going to get like that. Trey Lyles, the freshman out of Indianapolis, hoping to go home for the final four. Now Booker is on, and Aaron Harrison heads to the bench. And this is where Kentucky excels, right, with the depth that we've spoken about. Not only the impressive thing for those who have not seen them in person, television really does not do it justice with how big these guys are when you see their whole team in practice. Their guards are big. The Harrison twins are about 6'5 apiece. Right. I'll go you one inch better. They're listed at 6'6. Six, 6'6, six. Six, six. Yeah. okay. Well, and these bigs underneath, look at them block out. Wow. Lyles put a body on him. Here's Booker. He's going to give it back to Euless. Crossover. Didn't use the screen for the shot. So but look at how much time Kentucky's taken on possessions, and that plays into Cincinnati's favor as far as a slowdown. There you go. Defense just clamping down. Everybody's helping out on the blocks. Once again, kick it out, approach the perimeter if there's a shot. How about this jumper? Wow. Well, how about that jumper? <laughs> <laughs> ah, wide right. I did expect him to sit. <laughs> he could have played. He's going to play for Florida State. Football, that is. Oh, yeah. The best part about that with Cobb, he made a decision, Vern. Coming down the floor, he knew exactly where all the big guys were, right? Where are all the big guys when he's running? He gets out in a hurry here. Now look at all in the back. All the big guys are back. That means he can attack. Little guy up front. Go for your layup. Four forty-six to go, first half. Cincinnati by one. Monday on CBS, revenge is the motive on an all-new episode of NCIS Los Angeles. LL Cool J and Chris O'Donnell star Monday at 10, 9 Central, only CBS. Well, tight game here, first half, of course. Uh, it's not that Kentucky hasn't had close calls. They won here despite uh, being behind. Look at the back-to-back -back overtime games at Florida, at LSU, and Georgia gave them fits uh, in SEC play. Yeah, turn and the longer that Cincinnati can keep this kind of slow down and not let the team go up and down, where they score 75 points, and what they want to avoid are these dunks. They want to avoid the easy buckets. If they can just manage to get this into the second half, the 10-minute mark and under, you never know. Right now, Kentucky is not really figuring out this matchup defense. Another turnover. Because what the matchup does, Vern, it, it looks like it's got both. It's a matchup because it's man-to-man -man principles in, in a zone. And you can really run a man-to-man -man offense against it if you want. Now you sound just like Rafferty. <laughs> Thank you. Man-to-man -man principles. No, zone no, defense, defense with man-to-man -man 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 principles. That's something like that. Yeah, something. <laughs> Another bobble. Oh, what a nifty play by Copain. Four on one. Shaq Thomas. 
on the feed from Troy Copain. We've seen Copain with some nifty dribbling this afternoon, but more importantly for Cincinnati against Purdue for that game tire. I like the edge that Cincinnati's playing with too, Vern. Octavius Ellis, there's a double team and a nice feed out of the double. That was Lyles. Instead of being 6'10 and going over the top, squeezes the defenders and finds a cutter. The noise is coming from the people wearing blue. Mm -hmm. More. Nope. Now you're watching Octavius Ellis exit the floor, head to the locker room, and here is what happened, Jim. Yeah, let's see if he takes a, a knee to the back. Right there, around his numbers. You know, interesting enough, too, Vern, when you head out. You know, I think, I think hopefully when he walked out, it's not so bad. Now let's check in with Alec. It's definitely a lower back injury. I have no official word from the team what the injury is, but they did take him back to the locker room. He wasn't able to take his hands off the lower back the entire time. He was in so much pain. They tried to do some stretching, and when they got him up to walk and he was still in pain, that's when he gave him the nod and said, take me back to the locker room. Let's figure this out. And, Allie, you know what? That's a, that's just a great timing of your report because what I'm thinking is that, and I'm hoping here that speculating that it's not that serious, but under three minutes, get him into the into the locker room and take advantage of a longer time to try to rehab him if, in fact, he can come back. And that's just a guess on my part at this point. Sanders closely guarded by Aaron Harrison. Here's Shaq Thomas. He can go upstairs. And a fadeaway instead. Not strong enough. Here comes Kentucky. Yeah, Cauley Stein will make you fade a little. Here's Booker. Oh, nice they, rebound. They are. The guards are helping out too, aren't they, Vern? You bet. Copain. Copain is 6'4. He's got a seven footer on him. And the seven footer changed the shot. Well, that's one of the things about it. Coley Stein could go out and guard the perimeter and then he can retreat just as fast. There's not a guy in the country who can do that as well as he does. Back outside. And to Booker. Only 8 of 26 shooting for Kentucky in this first half, which has 90 seconds remaining. Back to Eulis. Jumper over Thomas. He's impressive, this young man. Lima, Ohio. Freshman. All SEC, all freshman team this year. Don't hurry right now to Cincinnati. Get it back out. Oh, yeah. dear. Well, that's one of the few times that Larry Davis's team's gotten out of control. Yeah, that's one that you're just not going go to go get. If you have to drift a little bit, they're going to time that perfectly. Four-point Kentucky lead. Seven unanswered now for the Wildcats. Colin Stein. Stay in your defense. Don't let them bait you outside. Euless. Harrison for three. Well designed. Great execution to get the long range. All of a sudden, Kentucky is taking control a bit down the stretch with two minutes to go in the half. Ten unanswered. That is only the second three pointers thus far. Both by Aaron Harrison. UCLA advanced earlier, first time in school history that they've advanced as a double-digit seed. The reason for that is they very seldom are a double-digit seed. <laughs> ACC teams have had a good tournament thus far. Pac-12 as well. And the first team into the Sweet 16, the Bruins of UCLA. How important is this possession, Vern? Oh, boy. So it's Copain. There's a screen set by Gary Clark. 
Booker picks up Copain. About a three second difference. Shot clock, game clock. Kentucky has a couple of fouls to give, more than a couple, but they are going to give up the whole shot clock, though, if they do that. Yeah, there's one. Coming up on AT&T at the half, Greg, Clark, Kenny, and Charles. They're well enough known to be just first-name guys. They'll have highlights of UAB, UCLA, and catch you up on the latest NCAA tournament news. That's all coming up on AT&T at the half. So the question is, does Cal want to bury and use his fouls, or is that an accidental foul? I think they may want to play it straight up unless they get in trouble. 12 seconds remaining. Copain. Okay. Off his foot. That's back court. Yep. Let it roll. Let it roll. Let it roll. Ah, don't pick it up. Could have let he could have actually yeah. let that ball roll right to the out of bounds and track it down, and the clock would have disappeared on him. So watch, now it goes back to my eye, Vern. It's going so slowly. Harrison might have caught up to it, then you pick it up even less time. You could have worked that clock down. Don't foul out here. Harrison. We have reached the break. Let's go to Allie, who is with John Calipari. Coach, offensively, you start three for 16. Why the slow start? We went, We talked about the physical play. The guys got bumped, and they were trying to draw foul instead of make baskets. But I think we're getting into a better rhythm. We'll be fine. Cincinnati's trying to eat up every second of that shot clock. Do you try to speed them up? Are we up? I think we're up. Eventually, someone's got to shoot the ball and get seven footers. What we don't want to do is give them baskets they can make, which are layups and open threes. So we're, I like what we're doing right now. We missed a bunch of shots. I would have rather been up 10 or 12, but this is fine. Thanks, Coach. He's Al always got a retort. He, he does, but you know what? He's walking in there thinking, what is he going to do? He's going to say to these guys, you didn't play real well. The problem is they may have a little carryover here from the first game against Hampton, which is kind of interesting to me, but he'll get them pumped up. Cincinnati, on the other hand, I think they stayed at their guns. You know what Larry Davis is going to say to that team? He's going to say, for about 18 minutes, 17 minutes, we executed okay. Hopefully Ellis will be back. That is the end of the half, 31-24. As Calipari said, are we up? We'll send you to AT&T at the half. After this message and a word from your local station. Welcome back to Louisville. Midwest region third round encounter. Undefeated Kentucky. Leading 31 to 24. Big story, Octavius Ellis with a back injury. And we'll take a look at these plays, Vern. There's been some contact with them, but the guess was, you know, in terms of the twisting and turning, that can cause more problems than a kick sometimes. Now, for more on the injury, let's check in with Allie. As you see, Ellis, he headed to the locker room. Let's check in with Allie, who is with associate head coach Larry Davis. Coach, we saw your team's leading scorer, Octavius Ellis, exit with the back injury. What's his status for the second half? The trainer's done a good job on him. He'll be back this half. He's okay, just spasm, and so he'll be back. For 17 minutes of that game, your team was in the driver's seat. How do you make it a full game? Well, we got to go back and make sure we got great spacing on offense. We panicked a little bit on offense, which led to a couple of runouts, and that's when they got their lead. And then we got to stick to the defensive game plan, which is, you know, keep them out of the paint, off the pass, and keep them out of the paint, off the dribble and force them to shoot contested jump shots over top, and then we can block out. Thanks, Coach. Good luck. Thank you, guys. And your reaction. My reaction is that I think if he can correct that. Now, once again, that's the young kids playing this right. game against a very good team. Panic is one word. Anxiety a little bit too hurried. But if they can just settle down and get back into the same routine that they had for the first five minutes, Fern, what they want to do is get to the 10-minute mark and have this thing at about five free points to try to get Kentucky to press mentally a little bit. We'll see if Cincinnati can do this. Cincinnati has the ball to open the second half. Here's Octavius Ellis, back spasms. Oh, boy. That's not good for a back spasm. That's exactly <laughs> what I was thinking. Dave Ellis will go to the free throw line. But they need somebody in there challenging. DeBerry did a very good job in the first half of really challenging the bigs and hitting the glass. 
And it's important to get something out of him. I don't know how far he's going to go, but you know what? If it's, if it's a back spasm, you, that's why I said with three minutes left in that first half, I think that was a good move, getting him back to get some extra medical treatment, and hopefully he's ready to go and just can out, outplay it and forget about it. Let the adrenaline take over. For the game now, Cincinnati is one of two at the free throw line. First two attempts in the ball game. Here's Colley Stein. Now that, that is a decided mismatch. So Colley Stein at seven feet, Topain at 6'4. Right, but if they can keep him out 17 feet away, that's neutralized. Sure. Jumper, Eulis. Well, that's over the top, isn't it? On Kentucky, yes. Kentucky well, take a look at the halftime numbers, Jim Spinarco. Well, Vern, I think, you know, you look at it, I think. The 18 points is terrific for Cincinnati, the free throws. But we talked about in Allie's point, the second question she asked, right? She asked about the driver's seat for 17 minutes. They did a terrific job of keeping this under control. That quick run out really, really hurt them. Baseline drive. Jumper from the quarter. Kentucky rebound. That's a shot you have to take, though, if you're open. Booker. Oh, he's normally deadly with that three-point shot. He's been struggling a little bit. I think it won a six the last game out. How about? Oh my gosh. Shaq Thomas. Then he got a foot in the posterior. Oh, excuse me. Ha! <laughs> uh, <it's> <laughs> Over-the-air television broadcast. Well, Shaq Thomas has a chance here, but you always see what you have to do with the second guy coming in towns. Normally, you'd probably with Shaq Thomas, he'd be thinking of going up and probably trying to dunk that. He, doesn't, he didn't get a good elevation, but he has to worry about the second guy in all the time when you're playing Kentucky. This is Eulis, Cauley Stein, Aaron Harrison, Booker. And Carl Anthony Towns, the five on the floor for the undefeated Kentucky Wildcats. They love. They go pain. That away. Now you try and get by Booker. Oh. That oh. remarkably reminiscent oh, was it oh. of the game-winning oh. shot, the game tying shot the other night. Oh. This one just didn't stay on the ring long enough. Exactly. Against Purdue. Good reference there, Burn. Right on the money with it. What does he do? Where are all the big guys again? They're behind him. Look, look at that, the way it laid up there. But you're right. The other one laid up on the rim for about, what, five minutes or so it appeared? <laughs> I think so, yes. Beautifully done, though. Troy Copain at the line. And how about the way he rebounded that ball about four feet off the floor to beat the taller guy down to the floor to scoop it up like the shortstop went on a short hop. Bearcats get the first three points of this half. I'm thinking 10 minute mark. 10 minute mark would be in my mind if I'm Cincinnati to just be possession by possession. Keep it close if you can. Harrison with the drive and the layup. One of the few times that Cincinnati has given up an easy bucket with guard play driving to the basket. Now Booker on Copain. Clark backing in, a little short. And Clark picked up those two fouls in the first half, so he never really got into rhythm. Screen set by Lyles. Booker still won't fall. Yeah, can't find it. Here we go again. Put back, no! Clark missed a two-footer. A pair of possible easy layup attempts for Cincinnati, and you don't get more than one extra shot. Uh, Lyles was trying uh, to establish a Ellis. low post position. Ellis and Lyles just then burning the traffic after the play. I don't think he did a thing wrong in that case. I really, he tried to slap the hand away. That's the third on Clark. Ellis is smiling. Yeah, see, the only thing there with Ellis and Lyles just then, that that play comes after the whistle. And you know what? To your point, it, it's aggressive. Yes. Nothing dirty. Play on. It's after the whistle anyway. 
basket does not count. Well, Ellis, we mentioned this when he was thrown out of the game the other day. And somebody just got teed up in there, and it's, it was. It may be a Kentucky player just with I the think way so. Cincinnati's Watching reaction. Ellis's reaction. It is really starting to pick up if you like intensity on the floor. And here, uh oh, here we go. That's a little brush, a little push off. I think they're going to get Aaron Harrison. Harrison. I think so too. Well, let's wait to get the call. It is yeah. Aaron Harrison. So he gets an earful of John Calipari. Now, the first thing that goes through my mind right now, Vern. If you're on the floor playing in this game with what we've just seen for 20 seconds there. I'm driving the ball almost every time to the basket looking for the officials to really con continue and they haven't lost control over this but it's getting chippy right I mean this I know and some, sometimes you have to let things go but I think they recognize the intensity of what's going on and how it's brewing right now we have not seen a technical foul called yet it looked from from Ellis's reaction as though there was going to be one what we saw was a nudge by Harrison this will be interesting because to my eye I thought I saw one of the officials and let's see what they're doing I, they're down no nope. right, let's go Antonio Petty is talking to Calipari from 20 feet away and Lyles is going to the line for his two free throws. And the initial foul is it a two shot. Uh, we're going to be told here in just a second. All right, Jimmy. So we have the two here from what we just stated. And then there's a contact technical foul. On uh, number two, Kentucky, which is Aaron Harrison, as we touched on. So he'll get two shots here. Cincinnati will then go down to the other side of the floor. And they'll get two technical foul shots. Copain goes to the line. Ball comes back to Cincinnati. Right. So there was in the traffic. At the and here's the in initial foul right there. So that's, that's a two-shot foul. No problem there. And then it was the Grays. And one of the officials couldn't tell which official came in and Hit Harrison with that technical. So Payne gets one. And here was the contact technical. Mm. And they're really going after Ellis now. And Copain gets two. Watch the coaches react. Ah. This is this is gonna it's starting to boil over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can drop some eggs in this pot. <laughs> Take about three minutes. That's it. How do you like them? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go to the basket with Clark. Him. Oh, he missed again. Quick outlet. Here comes Booker. Two on three. Booker takes it all the way. Oh. oh. That, yeah, it's a, it's it's a, it's a goaltending call, and that's that's kind of interesting. Here's Clark; he's going to jump over people. I like the fact that he's going after it. He had those two fouls in the first half, and the goal goaltending call goes the other way and put two on the board for Kentucky. A little backcourt pressure. Ah, look at the screen. Yeah, this is Octavius Ellis. Yeah, he's involved. He a got, little chippy. Yep, he's got to stay still. They'll nail him on that one. If he moves just a touch on any of these screens, they're going to call it. Here's Ellis. Look at the hands now. So try to drive somebody. If they're putting their hands on you, drive them. Copain gets the screen from Ellis. He's open. Copain takes the shot, however. And there's great position from Cauley Stein. Here's. Jumper Harrison, no. Nice rebound. Gary Clark with a rebound. And I think he makes a difference for this team, obviously. Clark missing those minutes in the first half. They can keep him. Oh, look at this. They're going to get Cully Stein. I just want to complete the narrative on, on Octavius Ellis, which we will do after this timeout. <laughs> 
So let's look her down here in the lower right. They're jockeying, they're pushing a little bit, but you know what, after what's occurred, that's gonna be a foul. Whether you agree with it or not, there's a, that is a foul. Of the country. Last couple of plays, Jim. So here's the goal 10. I'm not sure on that one though, Vern, because that was deflected, the shot was deflected. I guess they called it, it was up over, coming down again. There you go, Octavius oh. Ellis. Kind of interchanging Ellis and Clark on the one-on-ones down low to see if they can jump over people. Three-point ball game, six to 15, 27. Man. They're just kind of shuffling outside to keep an eye on the shooters and then still trying to pack it in deep. The fence is a slip from Ellis. And Kentucky makes it pay. Holy Stein has gotten better and better each year at his offensive game. He's known as a runner, a shot blocker, but now all of a sudden they can't get it. The town's on the blocks. They will go towards him a little bit more. And he's got good footwork, and he's very, very fast. Farad Cobb. And he is a junior. And a block. Holy Stein at the other end. Booker takes it all the way. That was one of those, I'm not sure if I'm going to get to the rim at the other end, and Cauley Stein just ate it up. So how do you react if you're Cincinnati? Okay, you call timeout. There you go. So Cauley Stein playing very well right now. He sees nobody in the middle of the floor. They start to close up top. He switch, just drop steps. Here comes the second guy in. If Harrison doesn't make a play right there, he's, it's an easier layup chance. And Booker finishing it off. Put Kentucky up seven. Seven-point margin. And Cincinnati called timeout when it got to that point. There's a kick. Pretty obvious. Yep. Quick point, Jim. You know, normally... Calipari platoons. Mm -hmm. He's only gone to the platoon once. That right. was at the four-minute mark. Essentially, he's used a seven-man rotation in this game. It's a terrific point. And one of the things Cincinnati has done, Vern, is they've looked for guys on the block. So watch for the second man in to help them out with a block shot. And at the break, you know who had the most minutes? Number three. 20. In and out. Ellis. Got it. There's the flush. Larry Davis said when they shoot the basketball, they want three guys at least going to the basket on the offensive glass. Good hands. Oh, that was effort. That was good hands, too. Effort, yep. Burn, you're right on it. And the hands, and also not walking with the basketball. So three things came into play right there. Gary Clark with the rebound. Oh, they're setting screens. Ellis is setting screens yeah, on is. all the guards. And the Kentucky fans hollering. Here's a steal. On the line. Andrew Harrison couldn't quite contain it. Here comes Lyles. Get a shot, take it. And then look at the three blockouts there. They're trying to go by people and a finish. And then all of a sudden, watch this one. Hands, composure, and not walking out of a, a jump, a jump into a rebound. Ellis takes a seat on the bench. And back and looks okay, doesn't it? Yeah. Let's see if they can get to bury the ball down low. He's going to try to use his body. Three the shot, shot clock. Goes. Yep. Two. Copain. Shot clock violation. Oh, I think, you know what? The bench not going to matter, but the bench is in the... When you look at the bench for Cincinnati, Byrne, one of the things you can look at, how the guys on the bench react to whether that ball hit the rim or not, because they have the best view out of anybody in the building there from that seat as to whether that glanced the front of the rim. And let's take a look. Just from their reaction, I'm going to guess this is going to hit the rim. Oh, yes. And look at the way it goes straight down. Oh, yes. And yes. they are so taking a look at it. Should have been a live ball. And the shot clock was disappearing, but yeah, that, that hit the rim. And watch the bench behind. This is a good catch. See, they're all starting to stand up. Yep. 
And because that clock is at zero right there, that doesn't matter because the, sh the shot was taken before. That was, a, that was a good shot is what I'm trying to say there. It wasn't a violation. Just probably looking at why they gave the ball to Kentucky here as the shot clock winds down. I think they're, they're going to answer it by saying that the Cincinnati player is touching it and it was out of bounds probably. Lyles. Oh, you don't lean. How about that by, wow, Gary Clark. And just to clarify the circumstance, they went to the possession arrow and it was pointed Kentucky's way. The Berry's back line is going to go shoot free throws. They you, got to call his time. You can swipe at the Berry. You, you better, I mean, he's going to get that ball up. I mean, watch this effort. The Berry's going to get this shot going up. You can take a swat at it from the, the offside in Booker, but you better make sure you're grabbing that big guy's arms because he is powerful. That's the third foul on Booker. And DeBerry at the line over the course of the season, 65%. And they're not seeing every single game, right, of Kentucky, but how, how infrequently probably did they get in foul trouble because of their depth, right? Exactly. So they rotate a lot of guys, and that's the luxury of having depth and not knowing for sure how many times they've had that, but I would think it's not been a big problem for them. DeBerry, Corey DeBerry shoots one more. 0 for 2. Wow, look at Clark. Clark for Cincinnati. Get up. And Clark is just putting out a terrific effort now. He's got six rebounds with limited minutes because of two fouls in the first half. Copain. Johnson. Three guys around the ball, and Clark has it. Wow, this is impressive. DeBerry. No foul call. And Lyles quick on the run out. Here's Euliss. Harrison to Harrison. That might have been a little shuffle step, too, out front by Aaron Harrison. Andrews got it now. You're limiting the possessions at both ends if you're Cincinnati. Nice step in. Back outside to Euliss. Long three. Good three. Aaron Harrison, long range shooting. Had a good SEC tournament where he made the first team, and Kentucky fans know how important that shot was. Three of 13 from three-point range. And this is Kentucky's largest lead. Copain, beautiful pass. Even better, but a foul is going to be called on Cauley Stein. DeBerry was thinking about taking down the backboard on that one, how aggressively he was going to go. And remember a minute ago I said when Booker tried to grab him, you know, you're not going to stop him with a touch foul, but here's the kick out. Harrison unloads from long range. I put Kentucky up eight. Forty-two thirty-four field goal percentage, both under forty. Cincinnati four of seven free throws. How about the physical play thus far, Jim? Kentucky knew it was coming their way. There's a little one that the one that happened after the whistle had blown, and that led to the Harrison technical. And then down deep, Ellis trying to get position right after that play. No Christmas cards this December for these guys back and forth. <laughs> Not at all. Well, you see Booker and Colley Stein, three fouls each. Carl Towns has fouled out six games this year, but as a team, Kentucky has only had five additional men foul out. Eleven total, and they've got two guys with three fouls in this one. DeBerry at the line. 65% free throw shooter on the season, too, Vern. 0 for 2 so far in this game. Cuts the margin to seven. Octavius Ellis still on the bench. Left with 244 in the first half with back spasms. That was not pretty. No. Here comes Aaron Harrison. 
Andrew Harrison back to Ulis. Settling back into the same zone we've seen pretty much all game long, Cincinnati. Pounds and, and Lyles are the bigs on the floor right now. Harrison. Lyles, offensive board. Oof. Terrific offensive glass work there by Lyles. But Cincinnati as a team said, guess what? You may get this offensive rebound against Larry Davis's team, but you are not getting a layup right here. I can guarantee you that. Look at this. There go five guys are collapsing down underneath the basket to help out. Lyles two of four at the free throw line today. And that is the fourth foul on Clark. Thought it might have been called on Copain, but it was Clark. You know that point you made before about raising your hand for the foul? Yeah. Would have been smart for Copain to raise his hand. <laughs> See if the officials would have gone that way. Because that's a big loss for them right it now. It sure is. He was getting Clark gets about three rebounds a game to Vern. So in conference, one of the best ones in their conference, an offensive rebound in which they, they're going to need here down the stretch as this thing approaches. Just uh, 10 50 or so to go. Cincinnati out of the American Athletic Conference. Their commissioner, Mike Oresco, is present today. Good Mike, to see Mike. Longtime friend and a former colleague at CBS. Kentucky ball. 10 39. So Ellis hanging the head just a little bit there. His finger pushed it out between. And Kentucky fans do sense when they need a stop and when they need a bucket. Rather knowledgeable, are they? Oh, yeah. And I've noticed the last couple of substitutions, Big Blue is booing <laughs> every time Cincinnati takes a guy out the floor. Here's Lyles up and under. Went three quarters of the way around the rim. Well, I don't know how that missed. Terrific positioning once again. Barad Cobb. No, this is Kelvin Johnson. Kevin Johnson. Have to find the bucket or the free throw line. Kentucky has 17 fouls. Not a bad time to be driving that ball at them, even though they've blocked some of those shots. Ellis rejected. <laughs> oh, that's going to bring a huge response. And look at Ellis, he looks up and grins. See, that's the concept of the second guy in. That's a perfect concept. Lyles does the work beforehand to make it difficult to get an explosion to the basket. That delay allows Towns, who's taking a rest right now, to get a little extra time to step in and block the shot. And so you bring Cauley Stein back off the bench, number 15, replacing Lyles. The very lost it. Zachary Johnson took it away. Cincinnati needs to settle it down right now, probably talk things over. Well, Larry Davis comes up. Yep, good. this is a good call. Big Blue is alive right now. So there's a little bit of a seam. Good decision. He almost pitched that up ahead, too. goes to the offensive rebound is because timing wise defenders are expecting it to hit the rim eight forty three to go but as crazy as it sounds that putback may be a big play just to keep their rhythm going oh boy oh, oh boy They're starting to make it happen. And Macaulay Stein just enough to get in the way to allow the drive to the basket. Boy, that's a beauty. Andrew Harrison tilting the body, extending the balls to make sure it was not going to get tipped, deflected, or blocked. 
And it was called on Ellis. Sometimes <laughs> it's destiny. <laughs> you had it. Are they undefeated? I think so. <laughs> Are we up? <laughs> to quote John Calipari, to Allie the Force at that break. There, that'll quiet them down. That's uh, for two. <laughs> They are, indeed, chasing history. This would be their 36th win in the year, uh, 35th. Leaving them four shy. I think, is that Clark? No. It's on Octavius Ellis. Here comes Copain, little dribble. That's big guy Johnson. Now, Johnson doesn't react to the perimeter as nearly as well as Cauley Stein. So that was a good read by Copain to understand the personnel adjustment that was made defensively. Well, Octavius Ellis, we mentioned earlier, ejected from the last game, flagrant two, has had a troubled career at uh, Cincinnati, kicked out as a freshman. He was one of four members of the team involved in a terrible fracas against Xavier. Also got into a bar fight. Octavius Ellis has had a very troubled upbringing. Among the things that obviously have affected him throughout his life, his stepfather killed his mother when he was a young boy. It's tough to get over something like that. Well, that's trite for me to even say. But uh, just to help you understand the kid a little bit better. All right, exactly. He keeps it under control and the emotions they're gonna need him right here. He's got the ball Cope Love this kid's style of play. It's on the line Seven minutes and 30 seconds away And it seems that the Wildcats have grabbed control. We'll return to Louisville and the final seven and a half after this. Be that guy that knows everything about your favorite team before the rest of your friends. Download the Team Stream app from the Bleacher Report to get all your team's news first. You know, you come to these tournaments and you make new friends. You do. And uh, you never know how old the young friend is going to be. This is 13-year-old <laughs> Sam Shamoon from UAB. Birmingham. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Now, the first, for the other day, he wore <laughs> a cute. yellow wig all game long. And he, he came up to us in the hotel last night, he and his family. And he didn't have the wig on. No. And I didn't recognize him. But uh, he's a he's a good one. There's Ellis. Double foul. Yep. They got Towns and Ellis. Take another look. Okay. Yeah, well. You can't tell if there's one guy doing something to the other without the other guy doing it right back simultaneously. So uh, that's going to bring the big man for Cincinnati back. Cordiante DeBerry. Ellis will sit. Double fouls, team fouls also. Now if you're Cincinnati in the last timeout, and I gotta believe they just said we gotta go after it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Well, I thought he might have given it up a little early. Or he didn't give it up at all. Well, somebody was behind Towns, though. They were running okay. right by him. That could have been huge. Cobb penetrates. You don't think those big guys influence that play, do you? <laughs> You see, that's where Cobb was. Cobb was oh, right yeah. there on Towns. That's a terrific defensive effort by Cincinnati. And at the other end, turnover. You see, now you have to get out of your personality a little bit if you're Cincinnati. You have to start to think about how do we extend defensively. 
And right now they're, they look as if they're in a man-to-man. -man. Will they fall back into the same zone? Yep, it's going to be a matchup for a minute, minute or two. They may have to come out of it, though. Harrison and Eulis. Booker, entry pass. Paulie Stein back outside. He's going to reload him. Not going to get it to him, though. Eulis leaning. Oh, okay, Tipping. Yeah, how about that? Loose ball, foul called. The big guy will get the free throws, but the little guy did all of that work. Watch this hesitation. The floater, which is a difficult shot, especially from the side. And just because he got back in there and got to the glass, they get an opportunity at the line. With a 74% free throw shooter in Lyles. And two freshmen. Lyles four of five. Two freshmen combining on that play. Five of six from the line. One of two this trip. Six and a half remaining. Winner goes to Cleveland next weekend. And that one's tipped, but into the hands of Clark. He likes to jump over people. Oh, that's blocked again. Lyles that time. Jump stop. Tip good, yes. Yeah, you see how Copain had to adjust. You better get back in a hurry. Harrison. Aaron. Harrison. 12 point Kentucky lead. And Aaron Harrison may be holding that left hand or wrist a little awkwardly. That's off Cauley Stein. So Towns is coming back in. Andrew Harrison as well. It's going to Aaron Harrison. He does seem to be favoring. Mm -hmm. And they make a bucket and then they're off to the races. And Harrison coming down and I think he jams that maybe a little bit on that fall, which was a little bit awkward. Copay. There's a jumper. He goes up the floor. Yeah. And Thomas. Shaq Thomas, number three. 520 to go. Whoa! Double block. Woo! Take your pick on that Whoa. one. How about that? Oh my god. Hell ball. These guys make redwood trees <laughs> look like elm trees. They do. You think you have an opportunity, and there's the double jam right there. And you get another shot at it. And Towns is waiting for you and just going straight up with his hands. Cincinnati has to has to go aggressively, Vern, though. So what if your shot's blocked? You got to keep going after this. Time's running out. Go pain. Oh, boy. Another block. That's seven. Uh, Harrison appeared to be injured on the last drive. Allie, what about it? told by the team that it's a left elbow contusion and he's okay to play through it. Thank you. Yeah. It was probably hit it on the way down alley on that drive and looks like he may have slammed it on the floor. Now what? They got it. Not sure. <laughs> Just a lot of activity. Oh. Wow, another block. Oh! 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 <laughs> oh my goodness. The block party finally falls into an assist. <laughs> yeah. Looks like a volleyball. <laughs> oh my goodness. It keeps the Bearcats breathing a little though. 435 remaining. 
Eulis for three. Brian, I'll tell you one thing. They talk about this team as all one and dones, and John Calipari, I think, it gets Mike Candley gets a bad rap on that. He's got, out of his top seven scorers, only three of them are freshmen. There was one there, but these guys have a combination of youth, experience, and they're gutsy. Octavius Ellis is fouled. Let's take a look at both possessions. So here's the block shot. Catches it and just mm, not sure if he got that off. And then this is a big shot. Wide open. Eulis at 42% from long range on the season. It's an air of confidence. Clark backs it out after the rebound. Offense. Two out of three officials had the same call. Yeah. So there's the arm, there's the extension. And when you get a 5'9 guy who's 155 defending, he flies a little bit quicker and faster than the other big guys fly. So here's the change in defense, Vernon, that I was speaking about. Now they got to rattle it up, Cincinnati defensively. Timeout. Timeout. 4.01 to go, and this is a Kentucky timeout. Kentucky wasn't ready for that just then. 13 point lead. Very close to their 36th win in a row. 56 43 is Kentucky going after its quest for a piece of history. And they don't make any bones about it now. No, they don't. It's uh, it's important to the entire team. And uh, here are the list of undefeated NCAA champions. Some guy named Bill Russell was on that San Francisco team. And of course, the last was Indiana in 1976. Three on two if they want it. Eulis. That was the way to break a defensive full court trap just then. Eulis fouled. Time call. We're going to step aside. How many blocks by Kentucky do you ask? Well, they had the one series where they had four in one possession, and this team is just long. The guards help out. They know how to funnel people to the bigs, and the bigs are very patient, staying away from most of the time foul problems, and there's a reason why this team is as good as they are. Number three in the NCAA, too, on top of that. Look at their seven leading, but they hold teams down, Vern, to 55 points on average, approximately number three in the NCAA. And you look at the scoreboard, look what they've done to Cincinnati. Only 43 points. Two of two free throws coming now. But T is, I beg your pardon, Eulis is now three of three. He was two of two. And the other thing, too, Vern, they seven, just the five turnovers for Kentucky today against that defense. Now, that defense is a, is a little passive, the matchup, but still. Now coming down the stretch, they're going to be rattled a little bit or tried to be rattled by the Cincinnati pressure. We'll see how they handle the ball coming down in the last four minutes of this game. Jermaine Sanders, number 15. Now you have to go in a hurry, but that's what shot blockers feast on when you're a little out of control. Sanders. Ah! Octavius Ellis. There we go again. There's Eulis. There's Harrison. There's Eulis. Oh, well, give me a chance, huh? <laughs> <laughs> look at look at Eulis with a big grin. <laughs> he, he could just sense that they were closing on him. Yeah. He said, I'm going to put this up there, and I know what's going to happen. And he gets there's the fake, and he can just feel that one more guy is going to get in this play. <laughs> well, he certainly responded. Affirmatively, that's tough to say this is in the game. That's I don't even know if it makes sense. Affirmatively. <laughs> Crossover? No. Octavia Sellis. Huh? 
took an extra step. Ellis is going to say he was pushed into that step. So he has the block out, gets the rebound. I don't know. Huh? Colley Stein. And Calipari over on the sidelines. Wants him to just run some clock right now. And that's the bad part about playing a matchup zone, Vern. They can take this thing down as low as they want because, look, now you have to eventually get out of that to go straight up man to man. They've worked the clock down to 10. And they get Lyles off the glass for two more. And it's a 17 point Kentucky lead. So if the rest of the field is thinking that this team can't react to a matchup zone, or they rattle easily because the team competed with them for the first half. Think again. Most of the folks in blue, most of them, are standing. Two minutes to go. Two minutes. <laughs> Two. <laughs> you should explain who I was imitating. <laughs> Mr. Zinkoff, the PA address, was the longtime Philadelphia 76ers years ago. Oh dear, whoa! Colley Stein is looking. At, what are you trying to do to me? Did you see the guy that was under my body? <laughs> it goes upstairs. But you know what? He was just standing there. Yeah. And Colley Stein goes over him. Octavius Ellis is out. Hey, guys, you. And uh, there. You see those two red shirts behind there? Yeah. See if you can go find a couple of more red shirts in this building, because I've been struggling to look for it all afternoon. They're, they're actually back right. They're to the right. Yeah. But yeah. other than that section, there is not many of them. Some back to the left. <laughs> not many. Not many. I'm just thinking Kentucky fans know people. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> There's one section. Other than that section of full Cincinnati people, look at the rest of this. Of course, it fits. This is the Louisville <laughs> yeah. arena. Polly Stein, he's going to get a chance to rest for the final 143. He's really improved his game. From just a defensive guy. 94 seconds away. Coming next on CBS. That was Copain and very reminiscent of the tying basket he made the other night. Another example, too. You know, Cincinnati put up a, a good competitive fight here at this afternoon. But this was a seven-point game at the half. And it just shows you how good Kentucky is. I know that's a statement in itself, right? I don't mean that in terms of how they can adjust, whether they're playing man-to-man, -man, whether they're playing matchup or straight zone. They, they, they have depth, they have size, they have talent, but they also have the ability to understand what they're doing, and they look for one another. They're unselfish. And coming next, just to complete that thought, Ohio State, Arizona from Portland. That's the next game coming up on CBS. Gary Clark, he replaces Corey DeBerry. So the Cincinnati season is going to end at 22 and 11. Tipped. Lyles blocked. That's for three. And a foul. One. Kentucky's going to win this. It's just a matter of by how much. And they are the second team into the Sweet 16. They're headed for Cleveland as the top seed in the tournament. And they await the winner of the West Virginia Maryland game. That's tomorrow night on TNT.
Dakari Johnson. Got it. He shoots one more. Well, in his first year, there is a character. That's a friend of all of ours, Barry Rorison, known with great affection as Slice. He's a Damon Runyon character. He could have had a part in Guys and Dolls. <laughs> and he goes back with John Calipari to the Howard Garfinkel camp. Oh, there you go. The five-star camp. They were roommates 35 years ago. And Slice, there's his slam. Mr. Rorison, I should call him. Right. Well, I first met him when he was on Ben Howland's uh, staff at Pittsburgh. He served as the head coach at Manhattan. John called him and he said, I think I'll join you. I think with me on the bench, you'll go undefeated. <laughs> Dapper, too. Always. <laughs> Xavier, Georgia, Sta uh, Georgia State, I beg your pardon. They tip uh, on TNT. And Ohio State, Arizona, 520 Eastern tip. That's next on CBS. Kevin Harlan, Reggie Miller, Dan Bonner. We'll have the call from Portland. Harrison will inbound. Just four tenths of a second, less than a minute to go. Booker. It wasn't their best showing today in terms of Kentucky, but have to give them credit for the way this game was played aggressively by Cincinnati. The matchup, they reacted. Well, let's take a take a look at what potentially might be in front of them. They defeated Hampton. They're going to win over Cincinnati in the Sweets, and we're picking the highest seeded mm -hmm. teams here: Maryland, Kansas. A lot of folks, if Wisconsin and Kentucky meet in the Final Four, like the Badgers. Not a lot of folks. That that would that's a mistake. There's some though. Some, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I think with those teams, and once again, we are assuming that they, they, they are the teams, but whoever the teams are in the front of Kentucky going forward are going to look at this tape, and they're going to review it, and they're going to look for signs of where did Cincinnati have the most consistent success against them in the first half. And they packed it in a little bit, but then again, second half, the guards really started shooting the ball much better for Kentucky. Margin is 15 right now. Lyles back to uh, Andrew Harrison. Foul is going to be called on Shaq Thomas. Uh, Larry Davis serving as the associate head coach has a winning record joined Mick Cronin's staff nine years ago. He's going to lose this one as the associate head coach but Mick Cronin apparently is fighting this illness he's, he's had successfully told us he's got two more tests to pass. Mm -hmm. He will not coach again this year. And now uh, John Calipari is going to put his starters on the bench. Most of them. And the other thing just in closing on the Kentucky points you know the guards are not only big but they can handle the basketball too. You know, so it's a good combination. You know, the Harrison brothers are just under 80%, so these guys shoot free throws. <laughs> They're going to be a tough out. <laughs> I kind of agree. <laughs> Man. The Kentucky Wildcats are 36 and 0, four games away from history. Final score 64 51. Wildcats continue their quest. Coming up next here on CBS, Ohio State and Arizona from Portland for Jim Spinarco and Allie LaForce. I'm Vern Lundquist saying so long from Louisville. We'll send you to our New York studio after these messages. <laughs>